Hi, this is Algebra 1, Lesson 96. We're going to talk about the difference of two squares theorem. And we're starting on page 402. Sorry about the funny lights. The sunshine is coming into my kitchen at a very odd angle today. In Lesson 62, we noted that every positive real number has both a positive square root and a negative square root. If f of x I'm sorry, if x squared equals 4, then x equals the square root of 4, right? And that means x equals either 2 or x equals negative 2. And we said we could write that as x equals positive or negative 2. The general form of a quadratic equation like this is p squared equals q squared. If we add negative q squared to both sides, we get p squared minus q squared equals zero. And now we have the difference of two squares, so we can factor. So we know that if we have the difference of two squares, then the factor is gonna be p minus q times p plus q equals zero. And if we solve both of these for p, we have p minus q equals zero, and p plus q equals zero. So p equals positive q, or p equals negative q. Right? We use the zero factor theorem here. So, this leads us to the difference of two squares theorem. If p and q are real numbers, and p squared equals q squared, then p equals q, or p equals negative q, which is what we said right here. Okay? Your book is only going to ask for the plus and minus sign when you're solving quadratic or higher equations. In any other kind of problem, like 9, the square root of 9 equals, equals, and you're going to write 3, um, if it didn't start out as a quadratic form, uh, equation or function, then they only, when it only says the square root of 9, they only want the positive root. If they want the negative root, they're going to ask for the negative square root of 9, which would be negative 3. Okay? The answer to the square root of 9, mathematically it is correct to say plus or minus 3, but the book isn't actually asking for that unless the problem started out with a square. Okay? That's a little confusing, but basically you need to know that if we're starting out with a quadratic equation or function, you need a plus, plus or minus sign. Okay? So here we have p squared equals 16. To solve this, we're going to say p equals the square root of 16. Right? We can take the square root of both sides. That leaves us with p here, and this is the square root of 16. We started with a quadratic equation up here, so this is going to be p equals plus or minus the square root of 16, which is 4. And that would be your answer. Okay? p squared equals 41. We take the square root of both sides, we get p equals plus or minus the square root of 41, and there's nothing we can do with 41, with the square root of 41. It's just going to stay the square root of 41. Okay, now we have k squared equals 13. So k equals the square root of 13. This started as a quadratic e uh, equation, so we're going to add a plus or minus. And once again, 13 is a prime number, so we can't simplify it any farther, and that will be your question, or your answer. Case K equals plus or minus the square root of 13. And that is it for this lesson. I think you can handle that. Try your practice problems. Let me know if you have any questions, and do your homework. Thank you very much.